across the country willing to take a stand against homophobia and for equal rights. And I can still see heaps of people arriving. So, for anybody that hasn't looked on Twitter or the news in the last hour or two, there's been a result at the ALP conference. And what has happened has been what been, they've been talking about for the last few days, which is that they've passed support for same-sex marriage rights into the party platform, but decided to allow a conscience vote anyway. response. That's exactly the message that we want to take down to them at the ALP conference venue. We've made our voices loud and clear over the last few years that we're demanding marriage equality. A conscience vote, and they know it, a conscience vote is nothing more than a cowardly excuse to allow the right-wing bigots within the party an excuse to not take a principled stand on a pretty common sense issue of civil rights and human rights. We're meant to elect people to represent us, but the Labour Party is refusing to do that. The Labour Party is choosing to govern over um, a parliament that discriminates against its own citizens in law, and that is absolutely objectionable. idea about what's so rotten about a conscience vote. I think the reality is that, um, you know, a conscience vote, it allows some people to vote with their conscience, but others um, just don't have one. That's what it means. <laughs> so I think that, you know, I mean, we've, we've received something um, pretty, uh, pretty dastardly, um, you know, and sneaky from the ALP, but I think that the fact that they failed to fool anybody um, with this half measure, the fact that everybody here knows that a conscience vote is not what we need to win marriage equality, um, really stands us in very good stead to continue the campaign. I mean, I'm looking forward to really going down there and showing them what we think, um, that we're not being fooled, that we're going to continue giving them hell. Um, so, you know, I think we can look forward to a very successful march today. Thank you. Thank you very much. My God, look how many of you there are. It's fantastic. I, uh, I, I love coming to sunny Sydney to hang out with the LGBTIQ crowd. It's fantastic. You're always so supportive. You're always willing to stand up for what you believe in. You believe in principle and you're willing to fight for it. That is what we need on this issue. I, uh, I think absolutely kudos to those members of the Labor Party who got their platform changed today. Let's give them a round of applause. You know what? True equality doesn't come with let out clauses. Absolutely. True equality has to be tr true equality for all, true equality now, and it's time to stand up and be counted. We need we need this campaign to continue. I today pledging that we will introduce bills into both Houses of Parliament on day one when Parliament resumes in uh, February next year. We will introduce... And I open an invitation. I haven't said this before. I have never said this publicly and I'm going to say it right here because you guys should be the first to know. I open an invitation to any member of the Labor Party or the Coalition to co-sign our bills. This is an issue that should be above politics. This is about love. This is about equality. This is about fairness. This is about basic human rights. I, I stand before you as a straight woman who's been able to have the choice to be married, get divorced, have a child, enter shared custody arrangements, and nobody blinked an eye. I believe that my rights are your rights and you deserve them too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I would, I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people, the Ora Nation, the traditional custodians of our land, 
and pay my respects to the elders both past and present. I'd like to acknowledge the people of the 200 nationalities who live within our city. And I would like to acknowledge that the largest gay and lesbian community in Australia also lives in our city. So welcome. <laughs> welcome to Hyde Park today and I want to tell you that the City Council, uh, Labor, Liberal, Independent and Green, voted unanimously on the 7th of November to support your rally today. So, the city is right behind you. This rally's aim was to influence the Labor Party's national conference. How ironic that the ALP conference is meeting on the 39th anniversary of the election of the Whitlam government. A Labor government that was not afraid to tackle issues of equality. And, and how cynical, how cynical is it that the conscience vote is now being used as a ploy to prevent this reform going through? But don't let it put you off. Continue to lobby those ALP members of the federal parliament so they give a conscience vote based on the merits of the case and lobby the coalition because they don't get expelled from their party if they cross the floor. So your work probably really just begins now, so you've got to really keep it up. Australians from all works, walks of life have publicly supported the change that you're asking for and a large number of Australians now refuse to accept the current discriminatory definition of marriage as it's carved in stone. And I want to remind you as I've done before because we've had many rallies on this, the definition is the work of a 19th century judge Lord Penzance who was deciding an 1866 polygamy case. It is a legal ruling and like many legal rulings, it can be overturned or updated with new information and new evidence. We have moved on in the past 150 years. When Lord Penzance made his ruling, child labour was the norm. People were locked away in debtors' prisons and women had no legal rights. We no longer send children down the mine or up the chimney. We don't lock people up because they can't pay their credit cards and women now occupy the highest offices in the land and they should be using that role responsibly. So don't let national leaders keep us in a 19th century paradigm as far as the equality of your, your relationships go. Ask for a 21st century decision. So I wish you strength for your campaign. You have my very strongest support. And I want to finish with the words of Elliot Wilshire in the Sydney Morning Herald this morning. He said, and I quote, we dropped gay from Mardi Gras, let's drop straight from marriage. Thank you.
Australia holding back? I have no idea. We are not obviously progressive. We're very homophobic, I think. Okay. So what do you think of uh, gay marriage? Um, I think it's, it's equality, not the marriage bit. I don't, uh, I, I don't think the Australians can get it right, so I don't think it's a problem really, but uh, no, I think it's all about equality and people should have the right to do so, whatever they want to do. Why is Australia holding back? I don't think Australia is, I think it's just the Labour government actually. I think it's Julia Gillard's the problem. What do you think of gay marriage? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Well, I guess marriage is a civil right. I think it's absolutely a right, absolutely a right for anybody. What's wrong? We've been together for 36 years. We're not allowed to get married. How fair is that? Why is Australia holding back? I've no idea. Political convenience, I suspect. Right, let's head. Today, to see the ALP changes platform, I want to congratulate our champions within the ALP and some of them you'll be hearing from today. Anthony Albanese, Doug Cameron, Mark Butler, Louise Pratt, the people who have been fighting for us, Penny Wong, John Faulkner, Andrew Barr. These people are fighting for us, but they are also fighting for our children for our families, for our friends, for Australians of conscience, because equality is not something that should be politically partisan. Equality is not something that should depend on your gender, your race, your ethnicity, or your sexuality. Equality should be about what is right to do, not is what politically expedient to do. Expedience at its nastiest. Make no mistake. 
What we now have to do is to overcome this obstacle. We are used to obstacles. That is part of what we have been brought up to expect. But from this point on, we have to keep on fighting. We have to make sure that every political party gets behind this, that there is no excuse that because someone is on the right of politics, that it is right to obstruct equality. A lot was said this morning on this conference floor about respect and tolerance. But I'm going to tell you something about tolerance. I believe today we need to be loud and clear that we have zero tolerance for discrimination, zero tolerance for homophobia. We send a message not only to Australia but to the world that Australia supports equality. We will not settle for less. Thank you for coming here to support us today. result. I mean, we got more than we asked for because I know at the beginning when I was coming down here, meeting all the MPs, they were saying, no, no, you'll never get party platform. You'll be lucky if you get um, a conscience vote. And so we thought, yes, okay, we'll go with the conscience vote. But then we could tell as time was building up, no, we wanted party platform and we've got it. Now, the good thing is this, well, it's it's not 100% what we wanted, but the good thing about this is, is when we were going around talking to the MPs, they'd say, yes, we agree with you, but party policy says we cannot cross the floor and we're not going to do that. Now, they don't have to cross the floor, they can vote with their conscience. And what we need to do now is get Mr Billy Boy, Tony Abbott, to start and do the same. He needs to get a bit of backbone and he needs to allow the Liberal MPs to also have a free conscience vote and not just do as he tells them. And then that way we know that you will all have equality, that you and my son will all have the choice of whether they want to marry or not and you will all be seen as equal. And what I must say, I thought the comedian for the morning was Senator Helen Polly, when she, no, she was very good. She suggested that she was quite intimidated by standing up, speaking and being the minority. And I thought, and I thought to myself, lady, you live it. And then you know what intimidation is and being a minority. So what I say to everybody here, getting your rights is not just about attending this rally on a nice sunny day and carrying placards. It's now about getting on to your MPs, especially those with the Labor who are unsure, and your Liberal ones, and pressuring them to stand up and vote for equality, and that's what you want. And do not give up, do not take no, you keep writing, ringing, making appointments, and what you do also is you take photos of your friends, your partners, your family, and you let them see that that's what you are. You're a family, not an individual, because that's what marriage is all about. So have a great day and celebrate this amazing win with the Labor Conference. Bye. Hello, everyone. My name is Rodney Croom. I'm here today with Alex and the others from Australian Marriage Equality. In this morning's debate, thank you, you were demeaned and diminished by one of the speakers against marriage equality, Joe De Bruin. He said, 
that when Australia sees you on television tonight, they will not see other ordinary Australians. And you know, in a way, he was right. Because I see before me today 10,000 Right. I see before me today 10,000 extraordinary Australians. <laughs> Australians with extraordinary dedication to the principles of equality and fairness. Australians with an extraordinary dedication to the future of this country. In 1997, I was a criminal in my home state of Tasmania because I was in a same-sex relationship. Fifteen years later, the impossible came true and the Tasmanian Parliament became the first in Australia to say yes to marriage equality. Before the last federal election, I could count on the fingers of one hand the number of state and federal Labor MPs who supported marriage equality. Fifteen short months later, the impossible has come true and the Labor Party has changed its policy to support marriage equality and we have before us dozens and dozens of Labor MPs speaking out in favour of that reform. So when tomorrow you get up and you read the newspaper and it said because the Labor Party will have a conscience vote, this reform won't get through, Tony Abbott won't allow it, remember the impossible will come true. And because of your extraordinary dedication to this issue, the coalition will I say will allow a conscience vote and this reform will happen. <laughs> to Julia Gillard and to Tony Abbott, we say this is not just a green issue, this is not just a left issue, this is an issue for every Australian because it's about core Australian values, fairness and equity and family. And when they recognise that, and when this reform occurs, the historians will say, yet again, the impossible came true. Thank you. And here will say you're not welcome at an ALP national conference. Can I say, you're welcome. Can I say, we love you. Can I say congratulations on a fantastic campaign. Congratulations to Australians for marriage equality. Congratulations to PFLAG. Congratulations to GetUp. Congratulations to all of the organisations who have worked so hard over the last few months. So hard in the latest chapter of the long, long fight to achieve equality in Australia regardless of sexual preference. A long fight in which Labor has always been at the forefront. Back to Don Dunstan in decriminalising homosexuality 40 years ago. <laughs> to the Rudd government removing 85 discriminatory provisions of statute only two or three years ago. <laughs> and like so many before it, this campaign is not just about legal rights. It's about respect 
it's about dignity, and perhaps most importantly of all, it's about love. And it's about it's about an institution which for centuries has symbolised lasting and committed love. The institution of marriage, an institution which shamefully has been closed to LGBTI Australians. The only civic institution in our country still closed to gay and lesbian Australians. An old, old dear friend of mine, Penny Wong, friend since teenager, who spoke today is entrusted with our budget of almost $400 billion. She does it wonderfully well, but she can't get married. An openly gay man, Michael Kirby, served as a judge on the highest court of our country, handing down some of the most important legal pronouncements in our nation, but cannot get married. There are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgender and intersex Australians in this position and enough is enough. <laughs> Friends, today we did not win the war. The law still remains. But I'll tell you, we won a decisive battle. A decisive battle. Up until this morning, Labor Party policy, the party of government still said that marriage is the union of a man and a woman. It doesn't say that anymore. Let me read to you what Labor Party policy now says. Labor will amend the Marriage Act to ensure equal access to marriage under statute for all adult couples irrespective of sex, who have a mutual commitment to a shared life. And can I... And can I announce today that when we return to Parliament in the new year, a Labor Member of Parliament, Stephen Jones, who's with us today, will move a bill to make that policy a reality. And can I announce that I and dozens of my Labor colleagues will proudly cast a vote in favour of that bill? But friends, we do not yet have the numbers. The question from this afternoon and for every day until that bill comes to a vote must be, Will Tony Abbott let Liberal MPs who also believe in marriage equality cast a vote in favour of that bill? That must be a question posed to them. I tell you there's a lot of us here who are very proud of what we achieved this morning, but we will not give up until that policy becomes law. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for visiting us at the ALP National Conference. Thank you for having faith in a progressive voice within Labor. Two years ago, we couldn't even get civil unions supported at the ALP Conference, and we certainly couldn't get a change to the platform. Look how far we have come. This year, people said to us, you will never do it. You'll never be able to change the platform. And do you know what happens when you say to any good trade unionist, you can't have something? We fight twice as hard when we hear that. I'm actually representing unions for marriage equality, and we're a group of 13 unions who represent 300,000 workers. For the last 12 months, we've been campaigning amongst our membership First, taking the debate to them, having them vote on the issue of whether they support marriage equality. And surprise, surprise, just like the rest of the population, majority of union members also support marriage equality. And for that reason, we've been representing their views at the ALP conference.
I just want to say briefly this. We now have to very much um, fight on an electorate by electorate basis. If you live in a Liberal electorate, you now need to turn your sights on your Liberal Party member. If you live in a Labor Party electorate and you're not sure about where your Labor Party person stands, you need to focus on them as well. And you need to know, no matter what, in this fight which is going to go on until next year when this bill, which has just been announced, is going to be introduced, that you will have the fighters of the trade union movement on your side. And I'd like to introduce another excellent fighter on behalf of working people, Doug Cameron. These real Australians. Australians who have compassion for each other. Australians who love each other. Australians who deserve equality. Don't waste your time ringing my office. Spend all your time ringing those MPs that need to be convinced that equality is a right, it's a human right that you should have because my vote is in the bag. I'll be voting for marriage equality. Just after the last national conference, I received a call from a mother in grey stains in the western suburbs of Sydney. She rang me and she said, my son is gay and I want my son to have the same rights as everyone else. She then outlined to me the discrimination that her gay son had suffered over his whole life and it actually appalled me because I didn't understand how deep some of, the, some of the horrible things that went on were in our society. And that's why I say to you, thank you for your courage, thank you for your commitment. You will not go away until we win this and we are with you until marriage equality is here. Thank you. I just want to say one last thing, and that is, there are many injustices in our society, and we need to continue to fight against injustice. But this is an injustice that should be dealt with now, that we should deal with immediately, and as soon as we go back to Parliament, that legislation will be introduced by Stephen Jones, supported by people like Anthony Albanese, and we will get this up. We will win this argument. We will give you decent rights because you are real Australians who deserve everything that every other Australian gets. An end to discrimination. An end to what you have suffered for all of your lives here. Thank you. Our challenge now is to continue this campaign because in these next few months, before this bill goes to Parliament, it will be up to all of us here today to make sure we have the numbers. But let me make this one point. Today has been a victory for our movement, but we know it's not enough. We know it's not enough. But what we know now is that this change is inevitable. Because the power of this movement, the power not only of the tens of thousands of people who are here, but the many millions of people around our country who now support marriage equality will win this fight. Thank you very much, many of you. You've heard from many speakers, so it's time for us to wrap up. But one of the people who you've seen in the last few weeks, has anybody seen that video with three million views, by the way? This is Julian right here, our man, taking our message around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.
everyone for sharing the message of love and equality that Get Up has put out into the world. It's been shared millions of times. I'm grateful. Thank you for stopping me in the street and sharing the goodwill and love. Let's take this all the way to Parliament. Let's make this legislative because I want to come to all of your weddings next year. Thank you.